Today's uh, presentation is about Los Alamos tourism, the ambassador program, and uh, how this can help you, how you need to tie into these resources. And this opportunity, uh, so we have the fabulous Liz Martineau and Kelly Stewart here to talk about this. So without further ado, Liz Martineau, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Rin. How many of you have been in Sala before? Oh, so, so a lot of you are new, so welcome. This is a beautiful space. So it's, it's great to be here today with all of you. Um, my name's Liz Martineau. I know a lot of, a lot of you out there are friends, um, but for those of you who don't know me, just a little bit, I have lived here for, hmm, I won't say how long, a long time. <laughs> I was a teacher. I worked at the Bradbury Science Museum. I did a little tiny uh, time with the Creative District in Los Alamos and then I worked with the Historical Society. And now I am working with tourism. So I work with Melanie, Lauren, and of course Kelly. And one of the programs that we are working on is this one called the Los Alamos Ambassador Program. The whole idea is that we want to create a welcoming community for tourists, but also for students and people new to the laboratory. So we are kind of unique here in Los Alamos where we have this population that is changing, right? We have tourists coming in, we have students, we have brand new people, and how do we help them become acquainted with our community? And that's really what this program is about. We have been doing tourism for a long time, but we're trying this new ambassador program because we want to make some changes. We know we can improve, and that's not going to happen unless we take some few steps to make it happen. That's how this program came about. Tourism has a huge impact on the community of Los Alamos. There's an economic impact. It helps fund a lot of the amenities that we, the people who live here, enjoy. So it's in our best interest, all of our best interests, to make sure that the tourists are happy, that we meet their needs, so that they go home and they recommend us to other people. Oh, well that slide came out funky. Um, so why do people visit Los Alamos? Here are four different things, four different reasons. Visiting family and friends, business, amateur sporting events, and vacation and leisure. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Talk at your table. Which one do you think is number one, the most common? Which one do you think is number two, three, and four? Go, talk. What do you think? Okay, what do you think? What's number one? Number one is for vacation and leisure. People come here for vacations. <laughs> now, now, maybe you thought it was family and friends because when they come here, that's when you go to the museums, right? <laughs> but there are a lot of people who come here who don't have any family and relatives here who are just coming. Maybe they come to Bandelier. They hear, oh, there might be something interesting uptown. They drive up to Los Alamos. So, Vacation and leisure, number one. We do have amateur sporting events here. I think that has grown a lot in the last few years. I don't have all the numbers, but I know there have been a lot more events recently. So uh, who knows? But that's, that's... It's important to know why people visit Los Alamos because that helps us design programs, design menu items, design activities that will meet their needs. Right? So it's important for us to know that they're coming here for vacation. So the goal of the Los Alamos Ambassador Program, which I kind of already mentioned, is to really create 
a whole group of people, a whole community that's welcoming, who can promote our local businesses, can recommend local businesses, can know, tell a little bit about our history. You don't have to be an expert in our history, but it is important to know a little bit about why people are, they're visiting for tourism. They're visiting because they want to know about our history. So it's important to know a little bit. So if someone has a conversation with you, you know at least a, a little bit. You can talk to them. Um, who is the training for? It's for everyone. We started with attractions and hotels. We trained the history museum folks. Uh, We've done a little bit with the Bradbury Science Museum. But we welcome anyone to take the training. You don't have to be in the tourist industry, tourism industry. You can just be a, a normal, regular citizen who's interested so that when you're downtown and someone stops you on the street and says, or, or they look lost, they may not even stop you, but they have a map in their hand and they're looking a little lost, you can be a good ambassador and say, hey, can I help you? You look a little lost. Can I point you in the right direction? So we are reaching out to all of these groups. And I encourage any of you who are interested to join us, because I think together, together we can meet this, this need. So the program, right now there are two parts to the program. There is an online portion. It's about two hours, an hour and a half long. You can log on and off as much as you want to do the program. And then when you're finished, you can take an online class. I mean, I mean a, an in-person class. So this is the online portion, and then there's an in-person portion. The online portion will be going away at the end of April. So if you want to take the online portion, I encourage you to do it soon. The reason is because they're quitting the program, not we're not quitting the program. The in-person program covers some of the similar things that the online covers. We talk about hospitality. We talk about greeting people. We talk about diffusing angry customers, what to do, because it's going to happen and it's not your fault. And we talk about a little bit of history. We talk about how to recommend businesses, and we provide resources for you to do that. We want you to take that information to feel empowered to leverage those tourists for your business. Provide correct information. Recommend other businesses. I know sometimes people think um, it's a competition. You know what? It's not a competition. We are all in this together. And studies really show that when you have two businesses, even if they're similar next to each other, they both do better <laughs> than one business out on its own on, a, on an outpost. So we as a community are really in it together. If someone visits your organization, it's really important to recommend hey, oh, you're here for, oh, you have children? You might like to visit the Bradbury. They have, a, they have puzzles in there. Your kids might like it. Right? It doesn't have to be heavy-handed. And then design products. Think about ordering products. If they're coming here for history, then how can you leverage that? Can you put an item on your menu related to history? Can you name something after one of the famous scientists? from the past. These are a few pictures of people who have tried to do that. There's Boomerang. I, they don't call this Boomerang, this part of the shop. I can't Gaia. 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 So they have all kinds of New Mexico products in there. If you're looking for something related to New Mexico, they're trying to leverage tourism here by getting products about not just Los Alamos, but about New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Historical Society and the Bradbury also have really wonderful products, of course, because that's where the, a lot of the tourists end up. And then Bathtub Row Brewing. Not only does their name echo our history, but a lot of their products on the menu do too. So uh, they are all examples of people who are really leveraging tourism to create more money for their own business. 
So we're here to help you. Melanie and I work in tandem, we work together, and we have the ambassador training and classes. And I will say that I am really flexible. I want to do whatever it is you need. If you want training on something specific, let me know, and I'm happy to come and work with you and come to your organization and do a program just for your organization, or we're trying to get a few organizations to work together. I had someone from the real estate industry came to me and they said, well, can you just talk to us about the history of like, how, like housing here or the town? And I said, absolutely. So I put together a little walking tour that just focuses on the history and housing of Los Alamos. And that's for their staff, just so they're a little knowledgeable. When they're looking at these, if you bought a house here, you know they're a little interesting. So it helps explain some of that. Why is it that we have these houses from the 1950s here, <laughs> 60s? Um, if you, I had someone who said, I just, I, I don't need the part about hospitality, but you know, I, I just really want to know a little bit more about the Manhattan Project. I know the movie's coming, and I know Oppenheimer and Groves, but that's about all I know. So can you come and just talk to us about that? Absolutely, I'm happy to do that. So I can come to a staff meeting, I can just um, do a program for a small group, large group, whatever you need. If you want me to cover hospitality, and customer service, I can certainly do that. And I actually think that's a positive thing for your business because when people are hired, of course you give them training, of course you do your own hospitality tour, you know, training, but sometimes when an outside person comes in and says the same thing, it reinforces what you're trying to say. So I think repeating some of that is really positive and I encourage you to think about that. It's not just the history, but it's also how to just be a good listener and how to respond to the customer. So we run special programs. The White Rock and Los Alamos Visitor Center, I wanna encourage you to visit there. They have great resources, not just for tourists, but for locals. If you wanna know what's happening in Los Alamos, Visit FYI Los Alamos, go to the Visitor Center, call the Visitor Center. If you don't know if, if something's happening this weekend, if you call, Annie is great at the Visitor Center. She'll answer, and she will. if she doesn't know, she will look it up. She's well, really she great. actually had a, a hip replacement in his yeah. first six weeks. Oh, no. Well, she'll be there's back. someone there. So, and Bob is here. Bob's a wonderful Bob person. is also a Visitor Center employee, yeah. So... The, the visitor centers are for locals, too. If you're having people come and visit, um, swing by there. Pick up a map. Pick up a walking tour. They have all kinds of resources there for locals, also. So I encourage you to go there. They distribute local brochures. I should have brought some. I didn't bring any. Um, and they have all kinds of resources for your business. And I, really, we're, we are here to help you. So if you need something, and we don't have it, let us know. I mean, our whole, our whole business is trying to help you. So please let us know what we can do. If you have suggestions, recommendations, let us know. Yeah? Uh, I admit I don't know where the Los Alamos Visitor Center is. There's signs, I believe, for uh, White Rock. Yes. So the Los Alamos Visitor Center is located right, right across the pond from here. It's right next to the Teen Center, right next to the Manhattan Project National Historic Park, across from um, Starbucks. what? Starbucks. Starbucks or um, no? No, across from. Not anymore. Ruby Kays. Ruby Kays. Ruby That's what. Right on twentieth. Right, on, right across from Ruby Kays. That's where it's located. Uh, of course, there is the White Rock Center in White Rock, to White Rock Visitor Center. So it's in the same building as the community center. Yeah. The old community center. Yeah, it's the 
Yeah, yeah, if you've been here long enough, that's the community center. It's been a lot of different things over the years, but yeah. Yes? Is there a brochure that has like all the chamber businesses? And if, if so, can we encourage each business to have that brochure so that we can promote each other's business? So that one actually isn't just chamber businesses. That's um, kind of a walk and shop map is what it's called. And um, it's kind of all of the downtown businesses, and that's a, you're right, Lisa. That's a great one to have in uh, in your business if you want them. We also have restaurant maps and uh, street Those are, maps, and they're tricky to keep up, right? It's because we have <laughs> things that are always changing yes, here. Are. So we we are always working on those maps. We're always trying to yeah. change those maps. But there is a there are maps for. Walk and shop, I think it's called walk and shop or something uh -huh. like that. And reach out to us or Liz or yep. Melanie at the I'm, I'm happy to deliver yeah, to your business if you if yep. you need something. I'm happy to do that. Melanie, I know, is happy to do that as well. Rin, we yep. all work together. So and I really encourage you. This is a brand new program. We know it's not perfect. We know it can be better. And we want to make it work for you, but we need to know what you need. So if you can talk to us, let us know. Say, well, I wish you really had a program that did blah, blah, blah. Let us know. Because right now I think we are in flex and we are going to be trying some new things, doing some, some new programs, and we'd love to hear what you need. And we'll work as hard as we can to make it happen. Get better at more restaurants. <laughs> we are trying. So one one way to get better at more restaurants is to make sure the tourists up here stay here, make sure they're happy, make sure we recommend what we have, and that will encourage more businesses. So the more we can keep our tourists up here and not send them to Santa Fe or Española, the more we're going to have more restaurants. It's like a cycle, right? So let's, let's do a good job with those, those people who are coming. There will be, be and, more restaurants. And if I may, <coughs> we need to be frequenting all of these restaurants and local yes. businesses. If you want to see these businesses here and succeed and have more, you need to be going to all of these places and spending your money locally. So um, we just finished the second year of the Business Accelerator Program, we did um, throw our phones on the, no, uh, we, we did uh, include this year um, food and beverage in that, um, and uh, we got one new uh, coffee place out of it, Wolf and Mermaid. And they, yes, yes, they are, uh, yes, Wolf and Mermaid. So they did sign a lease for that space they were in right behind our offices um, next to Origami. And they will be opening that back up soon. So, was that good dance? Soon. Uh, but uh, they had to do a couple of renovations, add a bathroom, and kind of make it their own space. Um, but when they get that ready to go, they'll reopen until then. They are serving coffee seven days a week out of Bathtub Row Brewery. Oh, nice. So, uh, you know, be sure and visit them and support them. Um, the other business that opened this year is actually located here inside Sala, Los Alamos Golf and Games. And if you haven't had a chance to check that out, we, we really encourage you to do that. So, um, yeah. I, do we have a map yet of uh, the proposed uh, new development with the old uh, Smiths, etc. So we not don't yet, not yet. yet. They do, but uh, <laughs> they um, that sale is under contract, and we should know more about that very soon. But until they actually own that property, am I right there, Dan? Any input on that? Until they actually right. own that property. Uh, but they, they do a lot of uh, community meetings and invite everybody to come out and hear what they have going on. I believe they'll be going in front of planning and zoning? Yeah, planning and zoning for site plan approval shortly. So Very soon. They just applied. So. Soon. Well, I've got specifically up the 
for the visitors, uh, for those people not knowing anything about here, and when they see something like that, versus seeing the vacancy of the dilapidated. You are so right, Doc. Yeah. And, and once they own the property, I'm sure we'll see a lot uh, signage and maybe more information. I was on social media last night, and there is a lot of uh, misinformation out there about it. Um, oddly, on social media. On social media, there's misinformation. Oddly. <laughs> Citizen is relevant. Yeah. Uh, so I was curious. Uh, I, I did not expect tourism to be the first. Yes. Uh, what do we know about the statistics of that in terms of how many people okay. are uh, staying here, visiting family, and then tourism, or staying at a bed and breakfast, or what's the profile of okay. people that are... Kelly is going to answer that, but I want to say one more thing, and then I'll hand it over to Kelly. And that is one of the most important things you can do as a business is to look around, see what other businesses are around, reach out to each other, and help each other. For example, Wolf and Mermaid, what's close? The Los Alamos Historical Society. Guess what? They do walking tours every morning. <laughs> you know, you can reach Wait, out. Do, do, those, do those people know, do the tour guides and the historical society, do they know about this new business? They won't know unless we tell them. So um, that's part of my job is trying to inform them when new businesses are up and running. But it can also be part of your job to work with each other at events like this to talk to each other. That's the whole reason they do a half hour of just talking to each other before a program, because it's really important that you collaborate with each other. Well, can I yes. just comment, now that you framed it that way, I hadn't thought of it, and so I wish I would have been doing that during the networking, but it'd be nice if we could get a conversation going about you know, what we provide and how we can help other businesses, because we'd love to be doing that yeah. as well. So let's start maybe at the chamber breakfast. Yeah. A couple of people can get up before we start our program and just say a few words. What you do, yeah. what you have let's to offer. That. I think Great that would idea. be awesome. Yeah. Great idea. Oh. I have a question. I do massage therapy in practice, and I've had people come in who are traveling. And one of the questions they always ask me is, what is there for kids to do? So I know that they've got. Is there brochures on things for kids to do? I mean, because I need to get some of those. Because I have a lot of people ask. I've got an eight-year-old, and I don't know what we're going to do when they come to town. So. That's a that's a great question. I don't have a brochure on that, but I could certainly work on that. Um, but I would say Peak. Peak has a lot, especially for the younger set, but even you know older kids and adults like Peak, and the Bradbury Science Museum are your probably top two. But splash pad, the movies. I'll work on a list. I'll work on a list. Thank you for that. I will do that. Oh, and here's Kelly Stewart. She's the one who can talk all about it. Let's get this. We're gonna get the A V going here, or the V. The, I, the A. The B. <laughs> Woo Hi, yes, Kelly Stewart. I am um, a marketing specialist for the county's economic development division, and I manage tourism. I'm also the film liaison. And so, yeah, Oppenheimer. We're big on that. We've uh, had a couple of big pep rallies for, Oppen for Team Oppenheimer. I encourage you all to join it. And um, we'll be having monthly meetings coming up. Uh, so I'll be setting out, uh, I think we should, we're going to be putting out a press release in the next week or so to let people know how to get involved in that. Um, and we're doing a lot of the, what we're recommending here to collaborate with each other, come up with ideas to, um, of things you already have that are easy, um, easy ways to, uh, kind of tie into the Oppenheimer theme. We have a lot of different things going on, but... Um, with regard to what you were talking about um, with the children's activities, it's a really good idea to have um, something that we can 
produce fairly easily a kid itinerary, things to do, when to do them. We've just recently um, wrote an article for Tumbleweeds magazine for all kid related, and we put in um, everything we could think of uh, from the community that we could do. And yeah, like you said, Nature Center, Bradbury Science Museum, Sala, uh, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, really unique things we try to bring out um, to show people what there is to do here. And we really try to, from a tourism perspective, you know, try to uh, create, um, you know, just our, our unique selling points because they can find the, a lot of these things anywhere, but making it something for the whole family and where they can, especially with this Tumbleweeds article, thinking back with my mom hat on, what a day or a couple of days in a, a new destination is like when you need the downtime. We kind of talked about those ebbs and flows and being able to flex your time and your you know, location. So I'm so glad to hear of businesses that aren't necessarily always hospitality businesses that are already aware of people. And it's just that awareness that that person you, who's, you're bumping to, into on the street could be somebody who's thinking about starting their own business. We've had several people come here from outside of the, you know, the, the st state and picked Los Alamos to start a new business and weren't affiliated with the lab. There is something very special here for people. You know, we attract a certain type of person and they stay here and they work here. Um, and that's who we're going for at our charge um, I'm part of the Economic Development Division, and tourism and all the things I do is to try to identify um, new sources of revenue for this town that come to our small businesses and support amenities and a quality of life for our residents. I mean, I, I don't know if you realize that, but we really think about that for tourism, and that's something that um, is supported by the New Mexico Tourism De Department. And just recently, we've talked to our, um, their research division, and they talk about things, not just about bringing anything and bringing as many tourists as you can in, it's also the consideration for sustainable tourism, making sure that um, attractions and things and your outdoors are preserved and, and um, kind of re, uh, directing your visitors to different things to preserve those, you know, different attractions to preserve certain locations. So I don't know if that's clear, but I, did ha I do want to address how many tourists come in. I don't have it broken down to the level that you were talking, um, uh, count, uh, re uh, sorry, citizens relevance, but um, we do have it broken out by last year, 2022. Um, we had 594,000 visitor, visitor trips. And uh, of those, so that's more than one per, you know, uh, 221,000 people made 594,000 trips. And we're basically 50-50 tourism and lab. That's how we've broken it out so far. I found that we were surprised, happily surprised, to know that we have that many recreation and leisure visitors. So it does support what, uh, what you were saying about that. So it's just um, what we're trying to do with the tourism and tying it to small and local businesses is I try to identify unique events, things that will bring outside visitors in. And um, I've, we've kind of started as a pilot, uh, an email list that some of you are, I know are on, Marketing Los Alamos is what I call it, where I bring up, okay, I'm promoting this. I'm promoting Bear Fest, because there's not a Bear Fest. It's the only Bear Fest in the state. Or Oppenheimer, our, our project Oppenheimer activities. Find ways to promote those things within your businesses in, using the, some of the tools that Liz was talking about. I'll just tell you, the fastest, the best, most sustainable way is that word of mouth and creating that positive, you know, help on the street, going out of your way. It's how you would want to be treated when you go into a new town. And someone taps you on the shoulder and asks you, hi, are you new here? Can I help you? I can't help myself. I'll run across the street to try to talk to somebody. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's like when people were here for winter, the winter classic down at the ice rink, the only outdoor NHL regulation, we had people from all over the state, I mean all over the country here, we had people from outside from El Paso, ton of people just work that thing and talk to them didn't know where they were going. We provide information in advance, but really, they're looking for it at the destination. They suddenly get here, and then they suddenly start thinking about it. Everyone around them is that positive ambassador that can help them you know, with a positive experience, and then, oh, go to Los Alamos. I love to go there. And, and most people will not plan the time that first visit. Like, they, it's the lab. They, they think about what's there, but they want to return once they come here. Many come see that they're knocked out by our outdoor you know, amenities. Uh, so I just can't um, you know, re recommend this program enough. It's uh, all of us, you know, customer service, I, we, we kind of take it for granted that we know what that is. These are just great reminders um, and just reminders of our sources. So you go out of your way to find the answer, find a person that knows the answer. You don't have to know. Uh, so I just, I really support this program and we're taking this new development <laughs> with um, the online program to kind of, like uh, Liz said, make it more um, to meet your needs and to and make it easier for you. I know most of people with businesses here it's a lot of work and it's hard to prioritize marketing. So we're looking for new ways to help you with that and market your business to outside of this community and bring those people in and bring those dollars in, have them spend it here. Um, there's another, I just want to mention a couple of programs with an, or opportunities that the New Mexico Tourism Department that they do when they promote it statewide. We advertise use their co-op grant programs to advertise outside the state. So they, you know, Colorado, Texas, Southern California, they're at the legislature now going for more money to go into San Francisco, which I think is a prime market for us, for people who want to get out of that traffic and, you know, come back to a place with, that's as beautiful as this and with, the, you know, no traffic. So um, we have them go in and remind those people that New Mexico is a state, one of the states in the country, because we're still working on that, <laughs> that we don't, aren't deserts, that we have snow, we have all these things that they, they don't know. And then we come in to those markets through this co-op program and advertise Los Alamos to them. And we show them the outdoors and we show them that, you know, we feature different um, types of activities that they don't expect so that's kind of how they're getting it. When they get here, we're dependent on all of you to help us sell this town and sell the experience of being here. And I also, even though it's not tourism, the new people that are already here, you know, we have their lab still hiring a thousand people a year, working really hard at it. And those people here are just getting their feet, getting the lay of the land, and a positive experience, sharing your own favorite things. That's the, that's the best kind of you know, warmth. I mean, I'm, uh, I run around at East Park, <laughs> the dog park. Met a lot of new people and people considering this town at the dog park. And I'll grab my card, please call me. Please, you know, connect with me. Because um, there's great things you may not know about. I've, I've met students here for internships and who are coming back that I will connect with their age group. We've got this growing, you know, age group in their 20s, in their 30s, and there's things to do. My daughter didn't want to be here. She's back here teaching, and she has found a whole group that she hangs with at our local businesses. They are they are your best market. So. Um, I just encourage you to participate in this group and, as Liz said, to um, give your input, no matter what it is, because we're real flexible and we want to make it work. Great. Kimberly. Do you guys ever do fan tours through here with the tour directors and then all the business set up special ones so when the directors and tour directors come through, they get to experience yep. that? 
So I know that Melanie has done that in the past, and I was just talking with her last week about we should do another fan tour. In fact, I think we need a tour, and, and maybe it would be great to have local people do this tour first, is I think we need a tour talking about the sites where the movie Oppenheimer were filmed, and just do a local tour, like anyone want to join us, we'll tell you a little bit about the movie, where it was filmed, uh, what we know, uh, a little bit about the history, I think that would be a great tour for locals, but also for fam, a fam tour. So We're working on a, a couple press tours. Um, for that, you know, statewide press and then outside, you know, national press to come in. Um, uh, we don't, it's, I, we think it'll be a little tricky for um, before the movie comes out, but we're still going for that um, right around when we open the tours of behind the fence tours in um, March 31st and then Trinity site. But we know we're really heading for October, that second round of tours, and trying to get media to come here. Once they've seen the movie and seen all these locations, we really expect people to want to see it. So we've had a couple of uh, pre uh, fam tours of people from the, uh, around the country, but I know you guys work with um, hoteliers and uh, other visitor centers throughout the state in Santa Fe. So I want to just bring up the whole obby thing. Uh, the movie that's coming out this summer will open, if uh, on schedule, right after Science Fest, and we really are expecting this to impact the community and the businesses quite a bit. So how can you take advantage of this? Um, be, one, ready. be ready. Be ready. One very <laughs> easy thing you can do, the Chamber um, has many times put together promotions to highlight businesses for events. Um, we've long done that for Science Fest. Any way you can make a connection to, if you use the word something sciencey, we promote it during Science Fest. And um, for, for instance, Kevin and Michelle have um, some great uh, Adam earrings that you made or helped the historical society with work we promote those um, so any restaurant that has an apitini or you know whatever it is we want to promote that um, so we just did this for Valentine's Day there are a half dozen businesses in here who took advantage of that and if you go to last Thursday's daily post you will see an entire page in there about businesses that you should consider uh, frequenting for when you're buying Valentine's Day gifts. So um, we're doing that same thing for the Oppenheimer movie this year for Science Fest. So anything you can tie into Oppenheimer or science, anything at all, you're going to want to get that to us. We are going to be premiering this on Oppenheimer's birthday, April 22nd? Birth day. <laughs> so get these things to me as soon as you can. We will be putting this out for his birthday, and then we will just keep building on it through the summer. We're just going to keep sharing this thing out. So take advantage of this. It is free promotion. Um, and we just want to help you tie in to this Oppenheimer theme this year and really help promote your business. So um, get that to us. And if you don't know how you're connected or you're, you're just like, oh, I have no idea what, what to do, call us. Because I am happy to come chat with you. We can figure out a connection. Okay. Um, that's, I, I think that's, that's an easy part for me. So. Yeah. Call us and say, hey, uh, can you give us some ideas? What can we do? I'm happy to sit down with you, Rin. Same, Kelly. Same. Kelly, Same. the whole Project Oppie is all about working together to try and come up with some new ideas. That The group has, we have a, I think it's eight tracks, we're calling them, or focus areas. Uh, business, business engagement. Right. Business engagement is one of them. Business and hospitality. So uh, Ren is your definitely your contact for that. But then we also are working the, with the New Mexico Tourism Department on um, a film tourism study and the economic impact of that. Uh, so wherever people are kind of nuts for it. Uh, they had a great 
a response to Breaking Bad, as anyone knows. We have people traveling from across the world to come to the neighborhoods of Breaking Bad, as you can imagine. We have a lot you know, more amazing things to offer up here. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. And they're gonna be doing that study you know, right around the time that Oppenheimer opens. We know Sala is already set up to show Oppenheimer in July when it happens. We're still going for some advanced events, so um, we're very excited about that with the, with the program they've got going. But uh, we're gonna try to work that, and um, we'll send out uh, an email to this group with all the information you need to contact us to get involved. And we're, we're only as good as what we do, right? So it's really important, the communication between all of us is really important. Kelly can't promote something if she doesn't know what's happening. Right? So it's really, really important for you to reach out, let us know what's going on, and we will we will promote it. All of us. Really. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Um, I just have a couple of other easy things that you can do to take advantage of tourists, newcomers. Um, you can put brochures in, I know the White Rock Visitor Center does a great job. They have display cases where they highlight businesses. You can put wrap brochures down there. Reach out to Liz, me, Kelly, Melanie, and uh, let us know you want to do that. It kind of makes sense in that case for it to be something a visitor might need. Um, we had a dentist that, uh, advertised in there for quite some time and we do you remember this Bob and I was kind of like I don't know about that and they're like listen if somebody comes and they're you know they're filling falls out or something it's like okay okay that works so um, anyhow you you never know but that that's a no-brainer right there um, we also do a newcomers event every month for people that are new to the community and Zia sponsors that and thank you for that. Um, it's, a, it's a great event. It's really started to take off after only 47 years of doing it. And, uh, <laughs> no. uh, but we need a project why we ask questions, answer questions, and just chat about different things they're interested in. And then we take them across the street to the tub and buy their first beer. So it's a fun event. If any of you are interested in putting information in the welcome bags that we give out or coming to one of these events, we have the food co-op show up on Monday and they gave out a $10 gift card to every newcomer that was there. We thought that was amazing. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great way to hit that market of new people to town. So, it's happy to just present your information if you can't make it. So, um, so, and don't forget about the Oppenheimer promotions, happy to help you with that. And then lastly, I just want to share with you, the Chamber does ribbon cutting events. This doesn't just have to be for a very new business. We're doing grand reopenings. If you do a renovation, if you have something big going on, we are happy to help you promote that. So please keep that in mind. We love to do those events and, and bring some attention, media attention, to your businesses. So 